Hi guys, Miss Raymond here, and we're going to talk today about naming ionic compounds. And these ionic compounds will be ones that do not contain a transition metal. So the ones that contain only are alkali metals, are alkaline earth metals, or aluminum. So the first type of ionic compound we're going to talk about is called binary ionic. And a binary ionic co compound basically just contains two ions. It contains a metal and it contains a nonmetal. So it contains two different types of ions. And like I said, that is a metal and a nonmetal. So this metal and this nonmetal basically are going to come together, and that's why they call it binary, is because there's two things coming together. And the way that we're going to name them is that you're going to name the metal first, and that metal is also called a cation because we learned in our last chapter that metals like to lose, and so they like to become cations, which are positive ions. And then we're going to name the anion, and the anion is the negative ion we learned last chapter. And then we're going to change the ending of that anion to IDE at the very end. So that's our rules for naming these ionic compounds. So let's get started. So the very first one that we're going to name here is NaCl. Now you might already know the compound NaCl and what it means. So you might already know that that is table salt. But how did we come up with the name that's the chemical name for it? So the way that we come up with the name is we name the metal cation first. And the metal cation here is that we have sodium. So Na is sodium, so we're going to call that sodium. So we just name the metal cation as it is. But then we're going to name the anion, but we're going to change that anion ending to IDE. So instead of chlorine, we're going to call it chloride. So it ends as chloride. So we already have sodium chloride as NaCl. The next one we have is K2S. We look up K on the periodic table, and that is called potassium. So we write potassium because the metal is always written first. The anion is sulfur, and instead of calling it sulfur, we're going to call it sulfide. So this becomes potassium sulfide. Next up, we look up the element Ca, and that is calcium. So we go ahead and we write the element and we say calcium. The second element here is oxygen. Now I know that we change it to IDE, but oxygide, that just sounds funny. So instead of saying oxygide, we're gonna call this oxide. So get in the habit of instead of saying oxygide, that we want to say oxide instead. And now we have Mg. Now Mg a lot of times is very confused with Mn, so make sure that you pay attention to your periodic table. Mg is magnesium, so we're going to go ahead and write magnesium. And then our second element here is fluorine. But again, just like before, instead of saying fluorine, we're going to change it to IDE. Lastly, we have SR, and SR is strontium, so we say strontium. Again, the metal's named first, and we just name it as is. But then phosphoride sounds kind of funny, so again, instead of saying phosphoride, we're just going to say phosphide. So hopefully, looking back on these compounds and their names, you've learned a little something. Like we said before, that the cation, or the metal, is always named first. The nonmetal is named second, and that is going to be changed at the end to IDE. Some things sound kind of funny, like oxygide sounds funny, so we say oxide. Phosphoride sounds funny, so we say phosphide. So those are some key things that there aren't necessarily rules for this, but just kind of hearing it out, we can tell that it's going to sound different, and so we're going to change it to oxide and phosphide. Now here's five more. Let's see if you can go ahead and try these. Don't forget to go ahead and do the metal first. Name the metal as is. Then you want to name your, cat, your anion or your nonmetal. But when you name that nonmetal, that anion, we need to change that ending to IDE. So don't forget to change that ending to IDE. Go ahead and pause the video and try it now. Did you pause your video? I sure hope so, because I hope that you tried these on your own. So the first one we have is aluminum bromide, which hopefully makes sense. The second one that we have might be a little tricky one. Did you accidentally say nitrogide? 
hopefully you realize that nitrogide sounds really funny. So instead of saying nitrogide, we're going to say nitride. And I guess we could kind of think about it as we don't want more than two syllables when we have our anion. So nitrogide or oxygide or phosphoride, those all sound funny. So instead we say nitride, oxide, phosphide instead. Again, we have sulfide here, so it's beryllium sulfide, sodium iodide instead of iodine, and barium oxide instead of oxygide. So hopefully you did okay here. Our next type of ionic compound is not binary because instead of being bi, remember bi is two, we have a polyatomic ion. And polyatomic sounds is exactly as it sounds. Poly means many, and atomic, of course, is atom. So here we have many atoms together making an ion. Now, you have on the back of your periodic table from your last test, you have a polyatomic ion chart. It has these polyatomic ions listed. It has the charges and it has the names. Now on the first several tests, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to allow you to use your polyatomic ion chart. But as time goes on, because we're expecting that you'll be taking AP or going on to college chemistry, you need to have a lot of these polyatomic ions memorized. So I highly suggest from today going forward, go ahead, make yourself some note cards, do those note cards or flash cards, do them on the bus, do them while you're brushing your teeth, whenever you can, because you want to try to memorize those so that way you have them ready for future tests. And I'll let you know in advance when you have to have those memorized by. Okay, so let's get started. So in order to name these that have a polyatomic ion, if it starts with a metal, we're going to name the metal or the cation first. Then we're going to name the anion as is, as long as it's a polyatomic ion. Now, we're going to see an example where one of these, the cation, is a polyatomic ion. So whichever one is poly, we're going to go ahead and name it as is. We're not going to change that name, just so you know. So even if it's second, we're not going to change it to IDE. So let's get started. Why don't you give this a shot? Use your list of polyatomic ions that's on the back of your periodic table that you got from your last test. Now, if you lost that, in the back, or yeah, in the back of your book, on the top right corner, you have a list of polyatomic ions there. Go ahead and use that list. So grab that now, pause this video, and try these in your notes. How did you do? Did you pause it? Did you try them? Did you use your polyatomic ion chart? Because you can't do this without it, at least not yet, because we don't have them memorized yet. So hopefully you, you got that calcium here, we name calcium first, and then this here is a polyatomic ion. We know that it's a polyatomic ion because we look at our chart, we see that PO4 has a minus three charge, and we see that it's called phosphate. So we're gonna name that calcium phosphate. The next one here, K is potassium, but we see here that we have SO4. Now SO4 is a polyatomic ion from that chart, and that is called sulfate. So we name it potassium sulfate. Did you notice in the next one on the polyatomic ion chart that you have two polyatomic ions that look familiar or similar? We have nitrate, which is NO3, and we have nitrite, which is NO2. Make sure that you pay attention to how many oxygens there are because you'll notice that there can be two that look very similar but are named differently. So we have nitrate and we have nitrite. This one, in this case, NO3 is called nitrate. Our following one, this one can be a tricky guy. So this next one is tricky because if we look at this, you might say, okay, well, is NH4 the poly atomic ion or is H4Cl the polyatomic ion? So if you look at your list, you'll see that NH4 is the polyatomic ion and it has a plus one charge. So we're gonna name that polyatomic ion as is and make that ammonium. And then Cl is our anion. And Cl, just like the last ones, because it's not polyatomic, we're gonna name that by changing the ending to I-D-E. So we call this ammonium chloride. Our last one here, NH4 again, is a polyatomic ion. NO2 is another. So we have NH4 is ammonium, and NO2 is nitrite. 
Now that you've had some practice with naming ionic compounds that do not contain a transition element, you've done some that are binary, you've done some that uh, have polyatomic ions, now let's do some that have a transition element in your next video.